Hello everybody, and so now is uh, part six of the Richard Lehman novel series reviews. And I just did The Cellar, which is the first book in the Beast House series, so I'm going to jump on to the second book in those chronicles, which is simply called The Beast House. Uh, there's the cover art. Unusually, this book doesn't have any of the usual blurbs on it, any of the usual quotes from like Stephen King or Dean Koontz. This is an older edition of the book. There's the spine. Again, it's another short one. And here's the back. It says, The wax works were so re realistic. Bodies torn and chewed. Blood blackly encrusting open wounds. Flaps of skin hanging loose, clawed from the stripped, ripped corpses. Men, women, children slaughtered, mangled. The old woman who showed them round was well practised in her grim, money-spinning tale of the mysterious beast that had killed and killed again. Of course, it was all in the past and all nonsense. Anyone would agree to that. Until trapped, they heard, then smelled and felt the white nighttime creature that had come grunting and spittle-slicked for their bodies, their blood. And again, no quotations anywhere. Right, so, okay, this was Richard Lehman's seventh novel and uh, it was published in 1987 and uh, in my pit i'm sorry 1986 it was published and in my opinion this is the first novel of his which shows a degree of skill in its writing and in its construction prior to this he had written really pulpy uh, <clears throat> books and this one shows a level uh, of sophistication in how it's constructed and how he handles the different strands of the story and also, he does take some leaps in his use of description. That's to say, he actually describes things in this one beyond violence and rape. Uh, he does set atmosphere in this. So, the story, again, there's not a lot to say about the story of these Beast House books. Um, but the cellar, the, last, the first book, that ended with 12-year-old Sandy and her mother Donna chained up in the beast house and <clears throat> pregnant with it seems beast babies and that was where that one ended and my main interest in reading this book was to find out what on earth happened to Joni. Joni was the nine-year-old child from uh, the cellar who was kidnapped by the awful Roy and horrifically abused sexually abused and at the end of the cellar she just kind of disappears and I really wanted to know what became of her, and I was hoping this book would have some information on that, but actually it doesn't. We never ever find out what happened to Joni, not in this book or in any of the subsequent Beast House Chronicles. And I didn't like that, because if you're going to put the reader through reading about the horrendous uh, sexual abuse of this child, I think you should at least give us the payoff of knowing that she was, well, she'll never be okay after something like that. But I mean, she was at least in some way okay after that. Don't just abandon her uh, as a character. I didn't like, didn't like that. That's the main f drawback of this book and subsequent ones is that you do actually get invested in some way in some of the events and the characters, but he just drops them and introduces a bunch of other, a, a bunch of new things. So, but anyway, so yeah, uh, this book, we, uh, begins with we meet these two young women Nora and Tyler. Tyler is um, a bit depressed and she wants to go and look up an old boyfriend of hers called Dan Jensen. Dan Jensen was the police officer from the prologue of the cellar who was killed by the beast and so she and Nora are on their way to Malcasa Point to look him up because that's where they think he lives. Uh, along the way they meet two young guys, Jack and Abe, and in classic layman fashion, Tyler falls instantly in love with Jack, and uh, together as a foursome, they then decide to go on to Malcasa Point to spend some time together, and that's how they come to be there, and <clears throat> get involved in the whole Beast House story. The second strand of the story concerns uh, Janice. Now, Janice was a very minor character who appeared at the end of the cellar. She worked at the the motel in Malcasa Point and she's discovered the diary of Lily Thorne which describes the origins of the beast and beast house and she wants to get rich quick by selling this diary to a guy called Gorman Hardy who's a crime writer a non-fiction writer who's just had a best-selling book 
about a true crime thing and she wants to him to write a book about the beast house and she, they'll split split the proceeds uh, gorman hardy is a real slime ball he reminded me of if you've seen rob zombies halloween 2 the evolution of malcolm mcdowell's character he just became this you know money hungry asshole really um that's gorman hardy what he's like very vain very manipulative so he then shows up in Malcasa Point to see if it's worth doing this book. And we also have the characters from the, the cellar, Maggie Kutch, uh, showing, actually, um, well, the people who run the Beast House. Sandy now helps running the Beast House. And that's, that's all I'm going to say about the plot, because it's not really, these books aren't so much about the plot, they all follow the same formula. Bunch of people show up in Malcasa Point, they take the tour in the Beast House, and a bunch of people get killed by the Beast. In this book, we do find out more about the origins of the Beast. Uh, there's a character in it called Captain Frank, who's a good character, very eccentric, lives in a bus, and um, <clears throat> he, his, uh, and one of his ancestors, it might have been his father or grandfather, I don't remember, was responsible for bringing over the the beast, the original beast, uh, to America. He was a bit of an explorer, and that's how it ended up there. I did very much like those scenes with him and where he's describing uh, the origins of the beast. And <clears throat> one of the things which uh, is new in this book is that I had said in my cellar review that the beast house itself, the Victorian mansion, is connected by a tunnel to the Kutch house across the road where the, there are no windows in this house it's all just like a brick building with a single door that's to keep in prisoners because they take people prisoners to impregnate them with beasts it looks like um, and we get to see inside that house this time Janice ends up prisoner inside and th those were fantastic scenes those were, those were cool very tense and uh, one of the things which people have said they don't like about this book is that because it's the second in a series and layman can't assume everyone's read the first one he again does the beast house tour we again take the the tour and, and learn about it and what the house is and all the rooms and all the different people who have died <clears throat> and some people have said they found that boring because they already know all that i didn't i i've grown to love the beast house and malcasa point and i was happy to take the tour again as i will be very happy to take it in the next book um I can't get enough of this uh, this place and this whole mythos as as in some ways badly written as this series is I still really love it and it's one of the most important series of novels to me is the Beast House uh, Chronicles uh, but like I said I didn't like at all that we don't find out what happened to Joni and we also don't really know anything about Donna Sandy's mother um the last we saw of her she was also chained up with her daughter and it seems like she's just kind of gone her own way and sandy's blocked her out of her life which is odd because sandy is now only a few years i think she's 16 now four years older than the seller and they had a wonderful daughter mother relationship in the cellar it's just it's never um realistic layman's characterizations and how people behave it, it, it it's always absurd i mean there's a scene in this where they've uh, Jack, Tyler and Jack have got this diary and they're keen to learn about this monster that they're about to go and fight. And in the middle of reading the diary, they break off to have sex. This is in the middle of reading a, one of the most absurd, ludicrous, horrendous stories you'll ever read in your life in this diary. And they just instant, they just immediately get horny and start having sex, despite having just read about murder and mayhem and chaos. That's the kind of thing that goes on here. This is how <clears throat> layman's very juvenile way of writing, especially women, like every single time this Jack guy, who she's just met like a day before, every time he compliments her, Tyler gets tears in her eyes. She's blushing all the time like a child. Um, it's it's uh, no no depth whatsoever, and this is just not how people behave. But again, Richard Lehman, isn't it? So you just take all of that as it comes. It, you don't read Lehman for psychological insight or realistic characterization. You read him for the very fun plots that he comes up with and the very <clears throat> fun, <clears throat> excuse me, very fun uh, events that go on in his books. So yeah, the uh, the Beast House is uh, 
again, I don't like to say recommended with these books because if you're put off by sexual violence, then you're not going to like this at all. But <clears throat> I do, I do like it very much. I don't know if I like it more than The Cellar. It's a better written book than The Cellar. It's a richer book than The Cellar. But um, there's something about The Cellar which <clears throat> I just I I like very much. I don't know what that says about me because it's such a nasty uh, novel. But uh, maybe because. Like I said in my cellar review, it was very influential in getting me into horror fiction. So maybe there's a nostalgia thing going on there. The uh, I know I'm not saying much about the plot in these reviews of the Beast House series because there isn't a lot to say about it. I would only end up spoiling stuff. Just, you know, a bunch of people fight the beasts in these house. That's all you really need to know about the story. Most of this is not even about the plot. A lot of this is about... Uh, the characters and how they fall in love with each other and the interaction between them, which for layman is handled better than usual, like I said. So I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, I like it very much. We'll see where it falls in my end of videos ranking series. But for now, that's The Beast House. And very shortly will be the third book in the series, The Midnight Tour. So uh, thank you for watching if you did watch this far. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.